friends, it's Monday, our first full day in Charleston, and today we are at a place called Boone Hall Plantation. We just drove up, and wow, what a what a drive! Yeah. It was just this super long drive full of I don't know what they call them Spanish moss trees. I think I'm not sure exactly, but just beautiful. And a little fun fact. If you have ever seen the movie The Notebook, this is where that scene where Ali and Noah ride their bikes down that long pathway is filmed here. So pretty cool. So we're going to go in. They got like a million tours. We got a little sheet. We're trying to figure out what it is we're going to do and where we're going to go. But yeah, let's do it. Right here is that long stretch of road I was telling you guys about. This is not doing it justice. I mean, it's. In person, it's crazy. It's so long, it's so pretty. Look at all these fancy moss trees. And this is like a perfect day, it's not too hot. Lots of people out too for it to be a weekday. And here is the, I guess, big house they called it. But this is not the original one, this was built in the 30s. This is probably, probably nine of them. Maybe nine. Ten of them. Ten of them. Nine. Nine. I don't know how plantation plantation sizes went, but this one seems to be kind of on the smallish, medium sort of side, I guess. I don't know. So we're gonna walk around and see what it's all about. Cotton gin is right there in that building right here. That's a cotton gin. That's where it says. Yeah, that says it's under restoration, so I don't think we'll yeah. get to see that, but this place is like wow. Cottage under restoration. Really beautiful. Alright, we're gonna go into the first building here. I can already see from the outside that there's some kind of like creepy mannequins in here. So I'm already like slightly creeped out. Major element of the slave's religious practice in the pretty's house continued to be singing and dancing to rhythm. In Africa, drums were the main instruments used, but the masters did not allow drums because they were afraid the slaves could communicate and secretly pass messages with the beats. So the slaves found other ways to keep the rhythm, with items that were easily available, such as gourds they could use as shakers, the pounding of a stick on the floor, clapping and stomping. When they got together in the praise house, they would perform what was called a ring shout. A ring shout is when the slaves would move in a circle, stomping, clapping, and singing for hours. This ritual is believed to have its roots in Africa, but became widely used in the South around the early to mid-1800s. Since the slaves were only allowed in the praise house on Sundays, they continued to sing. This craft its stories and its legacy continue and will endure for generations to come just as it has come from its african roots to present day the use of these baskets may have slightly changed but its skill and its origins have not please take a look at the variety of baskets on display here in this very cabin <laughs> Inside these walls where you're now standing lived a family and sometimes a couple of families of slaves. Like many slave cabins across the South, the slave quarters were the center of their family life. When the slaves were not working, this is where they would be. These specific cabins here at Boone Hall date back to the late 1700s to early 1800s and have been maintained in very much the same condition as they would have been in the 19th century. The cabin may have been furnished. However, some of these cabins would have had dividing walls separating it into two or three rooms. was the 
system of slavery. Slavery dominated the southern states in the 1800s. In the beginning, slaves were brought to the United States for the purpose of providing labor for a specific period and were then to be freed. But with the growth of agriculture and the Industrial Revolution, the business of slavery grew and became crucial to the southern economy. With cash crops such as cotton, rice, tobacco, and more, a very large workforce was needed. The African slaves were the ones chosen because they could work long hours and withstand new diseases. In the late 1700s to early 1800s, 400,000 people were brought into the United States to be sold as slaves. By 1860, the slave population had jumped to over 4 million, with Charleston possessing the largest slave population in the country. considered valuable property and could be bought and sold at any time the owner chose. Used most abundantly in the South, slaves were forced to do jobs on plantations that no one else would do. So at that point there were probably two families that occupied each cabin, and it could have been anywhere from 6 to 16 people in each one. So when you go inside the third cabin, you'll see that it's furnished, and it is furnished in there with the bed. However, in order to get 16 people into that cabin, that bed obviously wouldn't be in there. So in that case, most likely all the adults probably slept on the floor, possibly with some quilts. Also in that cabin is a ladder that leads up to the rafters. They put the floorboards all the way straight across. This is where the children would have slept, and that side can get 16 people into each cabin. The third cabin is furnished with the bed for two reasons. One, we did find a lot of carpenter's tools around that cabin, so we feel it may have been his. And since the carpenter would have been considered one of the more important slaves on the plantation, he may have been given a cabin by himself. He had a small family and some free time, possibility he made a bed for himself. But the second reason is that cabin is actually furnished, this is what it looked like, right after the Civil War when the sharecroppers had moved into each cabin. In the South, there were two systems of slavery. There was the gang system and the tab system. The gang system, the group of slaves were all brought to the field to be put to work for the day. And then when they were all finished, they were brought back to the cabins. South Carolina also used the task system. This was where each slave was given a certain task to do. So when they finished that task, they were finished for the day. And depending on the time of the year and what task the slave was given, some of the slaves could end up having some free time. So in the winter months when there was not a lot of work to be done, they may have only worked seven or eight hours a day. But the busy times, spring, summer, fall, it would have been 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Also to the field, slaves worked a lot longer hours than did the skilled slaves, and house slaves were on call 24 hours a day. But if they did have free time, they could come back down to the cabins, they could visit their families, they could go fishing, they could have little gardens. We just sat down for a talk and the lady was giving us all this information about the slave quarters and everything and she was saying that these bricks that were made for these, these weren't suitable enough to be used for anything else so they were given to the slaves and they could use them to build their quarters and she said if you look closely enough you can even see fingerprints in some of them so when we started walking down I said I want to look and see if there are any fingerprints in any of them and look here. In addition, yeah, that's right where somebody's finger went, right in there. one right there. Right in here, somebody's finger went right there. And these were built back in... She eight, said between 1790 and 1810. Yep. So, and these are the original ones. And she said people still lived in these up until the 1950s. And there was no electricity, no running water in the 50s. Crazy. Hmm. The abolition movement had gained strength and was a significant part of turning the opinion of slavery in the North, which ultimately gave support to the Civil War. With the election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860 and the fact that the South had seceded from the Union, tensions were on the rise, with the topic of slavery being on the front lines. On April 12, 1861, the first shots of the Civil War were fired here in Charleston at Fort Sumter. And on January 1st, 1863, Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed all slaves within the rebellious states of the South. This freedom, however, was dependent on a Union military victory. The word of this proclamation spread quickly, and many slaves fled to join with the North in the fight. 
The first voluntary black regiments were formed with the most notable being the 54th Regiment that on July 18, 1863, spearheaded an assault on Fort Wagner near Charleston. That there were blacks in the Confederate Army as well, even though it was not legal to have colored units until 1865, when it was too late. On February 15, 1865, the first Union troop to enter Charleston was the Racial tensions were high, and an effort to completely segregate Negroes and limit their rights was in force. In 1886, many Southern states established Jim Crow laws, which lasted until 1965. These laws allowed for the legal segregation of blacks in society. This included segregating schools, businesses, public facilities, and transportation. It is true that individual activists for civil rights had been around since the days of slavery, but it wasn't until the 1950s and the development of electronic mass media did an organized movement emerge known as the Civil Rights Movement. A single event that unofficially set the civil rights movement into motion. The real reason of my not standing up was I felt that I had a right to be treated as any other passenger. We had endured that kind of treatment for two months. The boycott of that Montgomery bus system was called for by a little road river by the name of Martin Luther King Jr. So here it is, the big house. We're about to go on a tour. I think there's actually a family who lives in here, so we're only going to be able to see certain parts of the house, but I'm excited to go in here and see it. This camera is not doing it justice. It's quite a large house. It's so beautiful. We just did the house tour. It was a pretty neat house. I mean, what was it? How ten thousand square? Ten thousand square feet, which is yeah. look as big as that at all. But, but they add the bottom floor and, and the top floor, and they put it together. That thing was only five thousand square feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It was so. nice. Unfortunately, we couldn't um, take any pictures or film inside, so you guys didn't get to see it. But it was something. Certainly yeah, something. Yeah. Look at these. down by the river but I'm gonna get some pictures from Instagram <laughs> you guys aren't following me on Instagram you should and we're about to take a I guess it's not a carriage ride but it's a ride around the whole plantation so this thing is how, how big was it originally uh, 700 and 770 or 730 acres. It was just given to him. From the original owner. It was given to him as a uh, gift for his wedding. So, what do you think about that? That's a wedding gift there. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really pretty place. I mean... the water is off on the sides all the way down all this water it goes out to the ocean Atlantic Ocean straight on out so all right guys we're at this place it's called fuel um, it was on uh, Guy Folletti's um, diners diners and drive-ins and dines mm -hmm. dives it's an old filling station it's an old filling station it's an old uh, gas station that's where the we used to bring the cars in that's where they used to take it out from that corner. That's the little. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see, but that's like the like the garage opening. The cars would come in, and then they take them out through there. But now it's a restaurant. Yeah, it's a cool little place. So we get some tacos, we got some salsa, we got burritos. And he got a shot. And he got a shot. <laughs> I didn't. That's right. She didn't get nothing at all. No, just water for me. Yeah. But we got as a like a little appetizer. They had this thing with three salsas. One is some sort of mango something. One is a tomatillo one, and I don't know what the third one is, but pretty good. Yeah. Good trip on. How are you liking Charleston so far? I'm, I'm liking it. Me too. Yeah. Like I, I'm kind of excited to. Uh, Summer's like, we're not going to have enough time to see Oh, no, no, we have to come back. Well, 
<laughs> we might be playing after that. <laughs> because just downtown alone, there's so many things that we'd like to see. Tomorrow, we're only doing some yeah. watch. And then, they got Wednesday. Yeah. And Wednesday is supposed to be hot. Yeah, it's supposed to be like 94 degrees. Yeah. So, ugh, we're going to have to plan very carefully yeah. what we do that day. Yeah, that's not going to be like an outside running around. So, we're going to have to see how that goes. But, maybe, we'll stick around for one more day. We'll yeah, see how we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how things will go when it comes to that. But so far, so good, right? Yeah, I like it. All right, here's our food. Michael got braised pork tacos. Those look really good. And sweet potato fries. Sweet potato fries. And I got a jerk chicken sandwich. It's pineapple, bacon, um, I don't know what that is. It looks like a mustard. Yeah, some sort of, I don't know what it is. It's some sort of... Just taste it. Just tasted it. It is mustard. Yeah, it's like a very mild mustard. And this is what they call island rice. I'm excited to try this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right, we're back. We had a lovely day. Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. We had a lovely day. But I would like to ask you guys a question now. Michael and I just had a slight discussion. Discussion. <laughs> now, I would love to know. Please leave. Well, a comment down below. No, no, no. Just leave a comment down below. When you and your spouse, your significant other, when you have differing opinions about whatever, maybe things you hear in the news, uh, things you should do with the kids, when one of you feels strongly one way and one of you feels strongly another way, how do you come to a compromise? Like, what do you do? I would really love to know because Michael and I just had ourselves a discussion. <laughs> It was not an argument. It was just a passionate discussion. And we had differing opinions on it. Now, what we usually do is we each make a point. Most of the time, I think we both somewhat see each other's point, And then we just kind of move on from that. Right? Is that what we usually do? Yeah. Yeah. But I would love to know, like, what do you guys do? Do you do something like that? Do you both, like, scream and yell and, like, try to get your point across? Or do... Is it, is it sometimes one of those subjects where nobody's going to get their point across and you just like just have to say, all right, that's it. I'm walking away from this. I would love to know what people do. Like, what do you do? Look at him. He's just sitting there like a stone <laughs> statue. Oh, no, I'm just listening to you. You're not asking me. You're asking them. I know, but it'd be nice if you could like jump in here and say something. You're in the middle of talking. How I'm am I supposed to say? I'm not talking now. See, this is what we were just discussing. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just whatever you guys decide, how you guys do things, just let us know. So he just repeated I, I, <laughs> She just explained this. And he just and, like hit me in the eye. And she just asked and explained it to the max. And then she's like, now, what would you do? I mean, say something. <laughs> it's like, you said it all. There's nothing else for me to say. Uh, but I'm just very curious about how, how people handle that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's a very, um, if it's a very charged topic. What, what do you do? I would really love to know. I'm very curious about that. All right. Um, our day. We went to the Boone Hall Plantation, which was so nice, wasn't it? Yeah, it and was, it was like a perfect day. Yeah. It was a perfect day. It wasn't, um, the weather was perfect. It wasn't very humid. I mean, it was very, very nice. We couldn't, as I told you guys earlier, we couldn't take any pictures or videos inside of the actual main house. The lady told us that right at the start. Yeah. Because I guess they want people to actually come and pay for the tour. They don't want you seeing it on YouTube. Oh, well, I can just look at what that person saw. Yeah. So I get that. But it was yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Plus the people who own it still live there. Yeah, upstairs. Upstairs. <laughs> So, well, the one lady, she lives in California. Yeah, but her it's a, like a brother and a sister own it. Yeah. And the, so. the brother is there from time to time. So, like, upstairs, mm -hmm. like, the personal quarters where the family lives, so you're not allowed up there at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. But it was something, the stories she was telling us about it. And she was, this is probably, like, my favorite part of, like, the house tour part. She was talking about dinner. 
now this was like a like a farm and a plantation and everything so they had cattle and then there was water surrounding it so they had fish and stuff and she was saying like every night for dinner she was like it, it would be like our thanksgiving or christmas you know how we eat like large holiday meals she said it was like that every night in their house pheasant <laughs> venison quail chickens duck every night there would be just like a big spread like you would get at a buffet or something but every night yeah and it's not like there was like 15 people there no, no. <laughs> it'd be like it the be husband like... and wife and maybe three kids or whatever yeah. and maybe they had some family members That's visiting it. but that was it and every single night <laughs> every night and then the lady said that the cook would make fresh meals every day every single day leftovers what is leftovers now but they said it didn't they say that they ate around like three o'clock in the afternoon yeah oh no i don't know three around three dinner yeah wow we eat dinner around three yeah. and then the, whatever was left there would be like you know like leftovers later on that night if they wanted to eat Oh, three o'clock. Yeah, oh, o'clock. and another little fun fact that I didn't know. At that time, it was illegal to have a kitchen in your house. So you had to do all your cooking outside. I didn't know that. Well, no, that was downtown. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. It was downtown in the, in the 1800s because people would set their house on fire. Yeah. You know, because everything was cooked with wood, you know, a wood fire. It wasn't like, you know, you had electric or gas. It was... A wood fire so of course you can't you can't sit there and have a wood fire cooking something I mean you could but it, you set one house on fire it's all made of wood <laughs> they didn't have fire departments back then and the ones you they know? did have it so, took like three hours and, and, if, to get and wait till you see the houses when we get downtown they are literally like three feet away from each other uh, yeah and they're then so right, close they're so close that just a one little ember just jumps over. Yeah, the whole block is gone. And then the whole block is gone. I mean, it, it would burn down the whole the whole city. It, it was just you had to you had to you had to cook outside. Yeah, but so far we're really digging Charleston. Yeah. Yeah. We're digging it. Yeah. We drove all around downtown after dinner. Mm-hmm. Just just drove. We just drove until yeah, we got lost. Yeah, you know, what I mean, we didn't know where we were going. Yeah. So we got some ideas of where we're gonna go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. tomorrow's gonna be fun. Yeah, we're gonna see you guys tomorrow yes. and. As always, we thank you so much for watching. Yep. What are we going to do, fella, right now? We're going to relax. We're going to take a shower and relax. We're going to get the day off of us. Anything else? More, more discussions or other stuff? No discussions. No discussions. <laughs> Mouth closed. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm just going to, yeah. It's a family. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a family channel so yeah all right you guys <laughs> thank you for watching thank you see you tomorrow okay bye, bye. <laughs>